So last week, I volunteered for a local dog rescue called A Soft Place to Land. They are a foster home based rescue and they were driving to Kansas to rescue a couple of groups of dogs from puppy mills. We loaded up the van and two SUVs with crates and drove about four hours across time zones through Nebraska and into Kansas. We met at a vet's office where some of the dogs were already waiting for us. There were 16 dogs that had already been examined by the doctor, and the van left to go pick up even more dogs. These dogs outside had already been there for 10 days. When the van came back, they brought 22 more dogs. We had to take them into the doctor so he could examine them and give them vaccines. They had all lived in cages their entire lives and were very afraid of everyone. They lived in a wire cage to avoid standing in their own feces, but they were still very smelly and dirty and needed their nails trimmed. There were lots of issues like ear infections and eye infections. One snouser is blind and one of the puppies has breathing problems. I was very impressed by how much everyone else knew about these problems and how to help them and what medications to give them. I was so glad to help these dogs get the care that they deserve and to finally help them find a better home. Most of the dogs were surrendered because they were too old to have puppies anymore. And these puppies either didn't fit the breed standard or they had health issues. If we didn't have these kinds of rescue groups, then these dogs would have just died. Puppy mills sell their dogs to a broker who then sells them to a pet store. A pet store is required by law to buy dogs that come from a licensed breeder, and a licensed breeder has to have a minimum of 25 puppies a year, which means it comes from a large operation like where these dogs came from. They can't sell shelter dogs, and they can't sell from backyard breeders. The guy down the street that has a sign that says puppies for sale probably doesn't have 25 puppies per year and probably doesn't have a license. Please don't buy puppies from pet stores or anyone else when there are mommies like this out there forced to live in a cage and just have more puppies. All the dogs were really quiet for the ride home, but when we stopped for gas, a few of them would bark and get some attention from the locals, but that would give us a chance to tell their sad story to a few more people. We drove them all back to Fort Collins, Colorado, where some of them had foster homes waiting. A few different rescue groups had come together for this trip to help all these dogs. Some of them were going all the way to Texas. When we got to Fort Collins, we unloaded the van and let all the dogs out of their crates to go outside and pee. It was very moving to see these dogs get to go out and walk on grass for the first time and sniff around in the dirt. All of them were very afraid of being touched, probably because the only times they'd ever been touched before was to do something that they didn't like. But you have to be extremely cruel to cause that kind of fear from any movement or noise. Most of them were just shaking in fear or pacing around. But they all froze when they were lifted up and seemed to brace for impact like they were afraid of being thrown or dropped. But they all have great personality and were just afraid of being touched. I think they'll overcome these fears very quickly once they realize that they don't have anything to be afraid of anymore. All these dogs will make a great friend for someone. Let us know if you want to adopt one of these dogs or if you have a rescue group that specializes in one of these breeds. We are fostering a Jack Russell and she's doing great. It's been over a week and she seems to be very happy being with us. She's much more relaxed and likes to go on walks around the block. And I hope to find a good home to adopt her so that we can give a foster home to another one of these dogs. Also, check out A Soft Place to Land on Facebook to see more photos from the day that we rescued them and to keep up to date on them and find out what their new names are. And thanks for watching this video. Make sure you tell your friends and family about it and share it with them on Twitter or Facebook. And make sure you subscribe to my channel here on YouTube so that you can see all the new videos of our new foster dog.